In 2016, AT&T announced intent to acquire Time Warner in a $108 billion transaction. In United States v. AT&T Incorporated, the United States District Court for the District of Columbia weighed in on the government's attempt to enjoin the merger on antitrust grounds. Communications giant AT&T distributed video content via its satellite and cable products, DirecTV and Uverse. Consistent with the industry's traditional supply chain, AT&T obtained content from programmers, such as Time Warner, which packaged content into networks and licensed them to distributors. Programmers made money by charging distributors affiliate fees and selling advertising on their networks, providing incentive to maximize distribution. As technology changed, so did the video content industry. Web-based companies like Netflix and Hulu started offering lower-cost options. The companies were vertically integrated, meaning they produced and aggregated content in addition to distributing it, reducing their costs. They also had direct consumer contact, which generated data for targeted advertising and content creation. Many consumers switched to web-based services. In response, AT&T announced a planned merger with Warner. AT&T would benefit from Warner's content, which it could stream on its wireless services, and Warner would benefit from AT&T's consumer base and customer data. Upon investigation, the federal government concluded the vertical merger, or merger between entities at different levels of the supply chain, would substantially lessen competition in three ways. First, Warner's increased bargaining leverage would allow it to charge higher affiliate fees to other distributors, increasing consumer costs. Second, AT&T could thwart emerging competitors by denying access to Warner's popular content. And third, AT&T could harm other distributors by preventing them from using Warner's HBO network as a promotional tool. The government filed suit in federal district court to enjoin the merger arguing that it violated the Clayton Act.